Hi everyone, Kurt with Hypnodyne again. Today we're going to take a look at ZLab. This is a sleep study management software that I've been working on and it's uh, mostly complete. So I want to show you a few of the features. Um, first of all, sleep study, participants, anonymity, privacy. Let me show you something. There's a key. There's an encryption key. Uh, it's generated by a utility which comes with the software. And this allows you to anonymize all of your participant data. But now it's refusing to do that because there's already a key. So let me erase that. Anyway, I've got a copy. And you should, should keep a copy. Like if you lose this key, I don't have any way of helping you to get back your participant information because their first name, last name, email, contact info, it's all encrypted. Like you lose this one and your study data is gone. But on the plus side, uh, Hypnodyne doesn't know anybody's name, anybody's phone number, anybody's address, so everyone's happy. So this um, key file you generate it once for your team, then you pass it to all the other team members. Of course, every person has a password. Every investigator has, has their own password to log in. But this is just a key file that is unique to your organization. It's going to decrypt and encrypt all of the participant data. So we go back to ZLab, that's normal login screen. I trust you've seen some of them before. And you're taken to the dashboard where you have your studies. You can create a new one, open an existing one. You can join a study with an invitation code, very interesting feature if you want to invite people from other teams and so on and so forth. But yeah, this is, I try to fit uh, almost everything in one screen so that you have a bird's eye view of just about everything. So. This is the study. These are the members. Currently, there's just one member. You can invite more if you use this function here to send the invitation code. Uh, you can uh, search. It searches very fast. Um, then it shows you some indicators to, uh, to let you know your, the degree of completeness. So th this, uh, this study, I set it to have 100 participants with 500 recordings. And so We've recruited only two out of 100 participants. That's not doing so well, but it's a testing, testing study, so that's fine. And we've briefed two. What does briefing mean? Well, if you go to the participant, you can set them to brief or unbriefed. I guess before they start uh, with the recordings, you have to teach them how to put on the device if they take it home or what the study is about. Ask them some questions. So this helps you to keep them organized and figure out how many you've actually recruited, uh, meaning that you've got their uh, contact information or they volunteer to take part in the study versus how many you've actually met or spoken on the phone or, or briefed on how to conduct the actual study. As far as the recordings go, they're of course tied to participants and this uh, section here shows you how many recordings you've acquired or perhaps you should say uploaded, but anyway, acquired how many got processed by the server. The processing is a, is a step that the server does for you and, and it shows you a lot of extracted features with uh, Hypnodyne algorithms. That's not shown today. That's the only thing that's not shown yet. And then you review the, these recordings. Uh, the review process is a process by which you hopefully get to produce a hypnogram or perhaps more than one if you've got two scores for some studies. And uh, that's it. Once you re review a recording, you can set it to reviewed. And this helps you to keep track of your uh, the progression of your study and uh, how fast or slow it's going and who's doing their work and who's not. But uh, let's say you've got a participant open. Oh, so we can add another participant. Let's call it participant 3. And last name, aadb.com, my favorite email address. Now, these locks indicate that this is the information that's encrypted. The rest is visible. The reason for that is that that's not data that can be used to de-anonymize the person. So we leave it in clear. And uh, that's it. Now I save it. And I've got myself a new participant. Now I can upload a recording. I'm going to upload a recording that's going to fail on purpose because I'm going to show you an interesting feature. If you make a mistake and upload the same file to multiple participants, as it's uploading it, it's also calculating a hash. So you're not able to, to upload the same recording more than once or to different participants. So in case you get your recordings messed up, 
that, that will give you a warning. And you can continue working on, on the study as this is transferring. You can transfer multiple files at a time, in fact. Um, other things. Well, this is all very simple. It's calculated uh, the spectrograms for the left and right channels. Um, the hypnograms, this is a function that allows you to directly interface with HD Scorer, which is the free scoring uh, software from Hypnodyne. And what you do is simply click on the hypnogram or click on an empty slot. You can have two or one. And if you click on that, it asks you whether you want to modify it or not. But that brings up HD Scorer. Ideally with that hypnogram, yeah, that's correct. And then you can modify, you can say, hey, well, what are you doing here? This N1, and then here's N2, and I'm pretty sure, oops, N2, and then perhaps N3 starts over here, for example. Oh, that was almost correct. And then we want to put an, an arousal here, if you want to call it wake. Go back to N1, doesn't matter. I'm not going to score it now, that's okay, complex. When you're done, just click Send Scoring to ZLab. It updated it, put it on the server, saved it on your local folder, and now any teammates that are cooperating on this, uh, if, if they open this recording from their computer, they're also going to have an identical directly, directory structure, which is very handy. Now, you can write some notes. Um, for example, you can say, um, this recording seems bad what do you think if you want to use this section to communicate with your other team members but also what you can do is put hashtags now, these hashtags don't mean a thing to ZLab but they might mean something to you and also to the software that you go and write to analyze your data once you export it export data right here and these hashtags are shown at the top and they're also shown right here and you can put as many as you want so as you're reviewing the recordings in fact, I think that you can even search by hashtag, can you? No, you can't. I'm going to add it, but it doesn't matter. So as you're browsing through the recordings, you can see which ones have which characteristics and you can locate them that way. Okay, if you need more space, you can drag this, no problem. All right, now the most important feature that I'm really uh, proud of is the following. First, uh, first a quick intro. Uh, there's this instant messaging application that I just discovered a few days ago, which is really, really nice. It's called uh, Telegram. It's very light. It's very beautiful. It's fast, responsive. It's all encrypted. And I like the founders. You know, the Kremlin came down on them saying, uh, oh, you got to release your private keys, give us a, a way to track everybody's conversations. And they just said, you know what? I don't think so. You're not getting that stuff. Very good. A very few social media platforms that are standing up for the privacy of their uh, users nowadays. So another thing that this allows you to do that, like, for example, uh, WhatsApp uh, absolutely hates, is to run bots on it. I think because a lot of people think about bots in marketing terms and spam. But you can do some really cool things with bots. So uh, without further ado, let me open the Hypnodyne bot. which I call study bot, or for lack of a better name. Maybe I'll find something better. So like each, each bot can have its own name. I suppose if you, if you run one for your study, you're going to have your own bot name. You can choose whatever you want. But you just run the bot, and the bot connects to Telegram using some ID that you created. It takes five minutes to create a bot ID. Unlike, you know, for example, Skype is very difficult, and Microsoft forces you to download the SDK, connect to Azure, you can't run it local. It's a mess. This one is so nice because you can have this software running on your PC. It's grabbing all the data from uh, from the chats, and it doesn't go through Hypnodyne, so I still don't get to see any of the personal information. But then let's see how it works. Somebody added the Hypnodyne test bot. So let's say I just did that. So I click Start, and it says, "Hey, welcome." So it shows me a welcome message that's customizable, and it's coming from. I guess this one. All right, now I'm opening these in Notepad. I don't know if you're familiar with the issue about the new line characters, but here they're all showing on one line, but if you open it in a decent text editor, it will actually look like this. So um, that's just a welcome. 
and then it's asking you to share the, con the, the contact. The reason for that is that uh, Telegram uses phone numbers uh, as identification, and inside the participant information here, let's go and grab it. Where is it? Oh, I minimized it. Um, aside from the regular contact information, right? You also have you also have the international mobile number without pluses, without any additional crap, just the numbers, because that's the Telegram ID, right? So if you want to interface with Telegram, you're going to have to add this. And what that allows the software to do is once this person has shared the contact information, now the system knows which one he is. And that's still with preserving complete anonymity. So now it gives you a welcome screen, which you can customize for your study. You can remind what the rules are, what you're trying to study, what they're supposed to do. That is here. Again, sorry, all on one line, but it's not actually like this. It's on multiple lines. And um, so it's telling them, hey, you can use hashtags, whatever. Uh, they have an option to set the local time. And just if you want to make it more friendly, you can attach pictures. You can attach audio. You can attach files. You can do whatever you want. So here I put a sample picture of a team, which comes from this. So it's customizable. Just drop it on the directory. And so let's see how this is actually used. So once the person is logged into Telegram, which they can do from home, you can just tell them, hey, download Telegram and add the uh, Hypnodyne bot. And then all you have to do in the clinic or in the university is just to add this, right? Then at this point, they can just write. They can just write whatever, whatever they want. But to make sure that the demo works, okay, I'm on the right uh, participant. Good. All right. They can write now something. So let's say uh, I feel tired. Now that goes to the Telegram server, and then it comes to the bot, and the bot replies according to some predefined responses, which you can also customize, as you can imagine. And what that's done is to store that as a note for a particular day. It's actually not a 24-hour day, but it's more like, uh, let's say, 11 a.m. in the morning from 6 a.m. of the next day is what I, what I think I'm using because that's the range of time, and I'm going to refresh here, that's the range of time for which that tag is going to want to be associated to this recording. And don't look at the end date, because these are messed up now, because I'm hacking it just to make sure it displays, because normally it wouldn't display, because this recording is a little bit old, so it wouldn't show you that tag that we just put in. But I, So I, I, I changed the uh, start date, this is the EDF file start date, to, to be today's date, so that now this message gets displayed jointly with this recording. See here, it, it put it, I feel tired. And um, I wonder why it's 10.21 p.m. Because it's actually 10.40 p.m. Huh. I don't know. I need to check that out. But anyway, this is a, it seems silly, but it's really powerful because what you can do now is First of all, you can tell participants, hey, whatever you do during the day, the more data, the better. Just, uh, you know, treat it like, treat the bot like your buddy and tell it everything you're doing. If you're outside taking a walk or what you're eating or what you're doing. So this gives you the possibility to end up with not just brain uh, and movement and all the ZMAX sensor data, but a rich database of activities and annotations that users can input in an environment that's extremely user-friendly. It's an instant messaging application. By the way, one that's really, it's really nice and fast, and they can add their friends on it. It's, really, it's growing in popularity really fast. And so they add this information because it takes not even a second to just say, I don't know, coffee. And you can customize the bot. You can say, perhaps if they say coffee, you can tell them, hey, don't drink too much coffee or whatever you need to do, right? You can even send them reminders like at 8 p.m. Hey, you're supposed to sleep in two hours and it's just going to pop up on, on Telegram on their phone. Uh, you, can, you can script complex behavior that has to do with the study regimen that you're trying to put in place in such a way that the participant doesn't need to be a genius or to read a whole book on how you want to run your study. They can be reminded in a piecemeal fashion step by step about what they're supposed to do next. Reminders, you're supposed to go to bed. Hey, it's only half an hour left. Please, please try, try to wind down. Um, why aren't you sleeping yet? Blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, and then the tagging. 
So the combination of being able to guide the participant through instant messaging and being able to get these tags is really powerful. Now they can, they can write normal text or they can write hashtags. Uh, it all depends on what you tell them to do and what you want to implement in, in the software that's going to then parse this data. Because remember, everything is then uh, everything is then available for you to export in in plain text format to be able to uh, get some algorithms run on. And um, and so, for example, if you're studying the effect of coffee, you could tell them, hey, a keyword that you can use is coffee every time you have a coffee. Or if you're studying something else, you can tell them which keywords are important, and you get them right here. So that as you open a new recording, you will see, oh, look. Uh, this person on that day did all these things and you can try to make sense of the data just by looking at it uh, You can perhaps even discuss here Hey, what do you think? Did he drink? Too much coffee And the other participants can answer it, but this is notes. I don't know if you want to use it for chatting, but it, and you could and um and that's it. And then when you export this information, you can also do that in an automated fashion so that you take all of the studies, all of the participants that have the coffee tag and figure out the difference between coffee days and non-coffee days. Of course, that's a trivial example. We already know coffee is bad for you, but there might be much more interesting things that you want to test, like, like drugs, for example, effects of a certain drug. Um, and uh, that's it. So interface with the HD score seamless inter interaction between HD score and ZLab. So this is a complete system by which you're able to recruit participants, brief them, keep everything under check, see what other team members are doing, uh, invite team members to your project, upload and download files which get transferred in the background, uh, analyze files, then here you're going to have the uh, the information from the Hypnodyne algorithms that are going to give you all the uh, extracted features for the night that you can also then export in text file format and do algorithm, algorithms on. So it's a complete platform to manage a sleep study, but also do something novel and quite interesting, which is to guide participants in real time through text messaging and also be able to get real time annotations from them and the big deal is not that they can annotate because they've always been able to do it. They could write on a piece of paper, they could send an email, but just the sheer ease with which they can actually just open up this thing and send a message. You know, they open up the application, it's still on the bot screen. That's unprecedented. So you might get a lot of really interesting data to figure out patterns and, uh, and uh, discover new mechanisms of how uh, sleep is affected by a bunch of different things. I hope this was interesting. I hope the recording quality came out okay. I'm going to demo all this stuff at ESRS 2018. That's the 24th Congress of the European Sleep Research Society. That's happening in uh, Basel, Switzerland. Uh, so just Google ESRS 2018. You're welcome to come over and uh, check out ZMAX and ZLab. And also uh, we will be at Somnex Show. The URL is somnexshow.com. That's in October in London. And I look forward to seeing you there. I hope this has been interesting. If you have any questions, oh, yes. Uh, so there's a group for Hypnodyne. Just look for Hypnodyne in Telegram. I hope it comes up. And that's a group right there where you can discuss with other researchers that are interested in ZMAX, uh, or you can just send us an email. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.